What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you all about Amazon CloudWatch. Uh, and if you haven't heard about Amazon CloudWatch before, it's basically a system that helps you monitor the health of your applications that are built on AWS. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, a lot of developers don't really have a good handle on all the features that are offered in CloudWatch. Maybe it's because there's quite a bit of them. Uh, but what I wanna do in this video is kinda of tell you a little bit about what CloudWatch is. That's what we're gonna do here on the product page. And then I'm gonna take you into the console and kinda of walk you through step-by-step step, all of the different components that are offered through CloudWatch, at least the ones that are the most useful. Uh, so here we are on the Amazon web page under the CloudWatch section. I just want to scroll down here to the How It Works section because I think it kind of illuminates uh, what this feature, what this system is all about. So we read this from left to right here. And so we have Amazon CloudWatch here that is kind of encapsulating all these different systems. Uh, so there's a couple different phases. So the first phase of CloudWatch is collecting your metrics from your AWS systems. Uh, so you can collect metrics from pretty much any AWS service. You can also kind of emit custom metrics if you want, if you're using things like Lambda or EC2 or ECS. Uh, but it really starts at the collection phase when you want to collect your information. From there, you can monitor Monitor that information through the use of dashboards, graphs. Uh, you can cut your data up by time period, or you can also group your data. Uh, so that's all about what monitoring is about. From there, in the ACT portion, you can kind of automate events in response to things that are happening in your application. For instance, they call out auto scaling here, which is useful if your, um, for instance, your EC2 applications get a lot of requests, maybe they wanna spin up more EC2 instances so they can handle that burst of requests. Um, so monitoring your traffic levels and then scaling up is a feature that's kind of encapsulated in the ACT phase. And in the analysis phase, this is um, you know, for data cutting, data grouping. You can also create composite metrics, which are a function of several other underlying metrics, very useful uh, in certain circumstances. Uh, but the key here is that basically CloudWatch is a way for you to manage and monitor the health of your application. And it's really a uh, feedback loop that happens. You collect, you monitor, you trigger things to, to automatically respond, you analyze, uh, you tune your data, or you tune your system so that it works slightly better. And then you go off and collect, monitor, act, and analyze again. So it's a constant loop. You're constantly going in a circle with CloudWatch. Uh, so that's a little bit about what CloudWatch is. Uh, hopefully this made sense for you. Now I wanna kinda walk you through in the AWS console uh, how CloudWatch works or some of the features that are kind of available for CloudWatch. So let me go over to the dashboard section. Um, so this is the homepage of Amazon CloudWatch and I just went to services and if you just type in CloudWatch, it'll bring you to this page. Um, so this is the default view, just the, the kind of homepage, and this kind of gives you a summary of everything that's going on. Um, so this page is more pertinent for those of you that have alarms configured, and that's something that I'll get to. You can see here on the side, there's alarms. Um, but if alarms are in, um, in duress, to, so to speak, um, they'd be kind of shown here. And depending on what alarms you have on your system, you'd have different things that are showing here. So I don't wanna go into too much detail on that yet, maybe when I get into the alarm section, but let's go through these things one by one. So on the left here is kind of our navigation pane. And you can see there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, these all aren't gonna be useful for you, but you can see there's like probably 10 or 15 different sections here. And the reason this is the case is because Cloud CloudWatch is kind of like an umbrella service. Um, there's many other smaller components that kind of go into CloudWatch or smaller features that go into CloudWatch. Uh, so that's why people kind of get confused when they say, oh, do you know CloudWatch? Because there's so many different things here. No one knows all these things. Uh, but hopefully I can kind of illuminate some of the uh, unknowns here for you today. So let's go through uh, the first one here, dashboards. Uh, so I currently have no dashboard available and that's fine. This is pretty much a brand new account. But what dashboards allow you to do, and you can kind of create a dashboard here, name your dashboard, whatever you want, is to basically, um, you can see here, create a one-stop shop for monitoring certain kind of themes of your application. So we can select line here, click on next. We can create a um, dashboard that has you know certain metrics that it's gonna be running on. So maybe DynamoDB on this table, and I can add a quick little graph on consumed write capacity units. And now all of a sudden I have this awesome graph here, and then you can go ahead and duplicate this. So you can have multiple graphs, uh, duplicate this again, and then maybe you want uh, obviously these two graphs to be different. And then you can kind of play with the, the time settings here. This is basically just um, an empty graph because I never kind of 
um, use this table so all this information is going to be blank but this basically gives you a very good spot to take a look at an application uh, at a glance and see how it's performed you can have tens if not hundreds of graphs here and kind of separated by theme uh, and you can kind of assess the health of your application you can also do other things like add different widgets like um, text widgets for instance um, and you can use all this fancy markdown stuff so like if you want a header uh, for you know latency uh, for your application you can create a kind of latency oops you can create a section that's just for latency which is kind of like a label here and separate them out into different sections so that's what dashboards are for uh, they kind of give you a quick at a glance view of the health of your application so these can go very very far there's a lot of different features here you can add live data there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with it so i'd encourage you to take a look a little bit further uh, now, the second part that I really like is probably one of the most useful is the concept of alarms. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any alarms that are set up on this account, but creating an alarm is pretty easy. All you really do is select create alarm, you select the metric, and then whatever you want the alarm to be on, you basically find the metric that you want to attach it to. Uh, say, for instance, I want to do it. I don't know what this even is. I'm just clicking yes, yes, yes. Um, but on this particular metric, this is a SNS number of notifications failed metric. Uh, you can add an alarm such that if this number rises above certain, a certain number for a prolonged period of time, uh, you can put it into an alarm state. And what that does is, where is it? You can click on next here. Let's say if it goes above one, that's a problem. Uh, then you can trigger an action. And this is where the kind of response uh, to the alarm being triggered really comes in. Uh, so you can, when it's in alarm, send it to an SNS topic and then connect that SNS topic to an email. Maybe it's your home email. Um, so you can get kind of notified when certain things are in alarm. Uh, so very, very useful for quickly reacting to problems in your AWS services. So that's alarms. Um, the other one that's very useful is logs for kind of assessing what's going on in your application. And this is separated into two main groups. The first one is log groups and the second one is insights. So log groups are just basically raw data dumps for your log files. Uh, so you can see here, if I click on this log stream down here, I'm not sure what I was doing, but this is a um, event. I'm not sure what was happening here, but um, they're just basic log lines that get piped into the log section of CloudWatch uh, under the log groups. Now, Insight is a fairly new feature. Um, it's So part of the problem with the log group section is that it's very hard to search through logs. If you have like hundreds of thousands of log lines, if not millions, it's very, very difficult. You'll have a ton of different log groups that uh, you kind of have to go through one by one and the search mechanism doesn't work very well. Uh, but to address this problem, they kind of introduced this concept of insights, uh, which as you can see here, give you a SQL-esque kind of search that you can do on your log group. So you can just kind of select any log group that you want to be searched, um, write any command that you want, um, and then run the query. And this kind of just works as you'd expect. Um, this obviously isn't gonna work for me though, since I didn't really customize it for my log groups, but uh, you get the idea and you can kind of read up all about this. Uh, it's a very, very powerful for just doing, you know, regular expression searching or even grouping as well. Very, very cool tool. Uh, the next important one is metrics, and this is really where I spend a lot of my time uh, when I'm working with AWS, just because I care a lot about latency, how my applications are performing, um, looking at different metrics uh, in combination, and then cutting the data and, and drawing conclusions based on what is happening in the system. Um, so there's a ton of different metrics that are by default available to you um, through AWS. So let's go to Lambda really quick and take a look at uh, some of these metrics. So function name. Uh, so I was playing with Amplify the other day. So uh, I'm not sure if these are gonna actually have any data. Um, but if you go to like duration, for instance, uh, you can see here that when I was playing with it, I had a couple Lambda invocations and the first one was for 1500 milliseconds. Um, you know, this in itself doesn't mean anything, but if you have an application that has quite a lot of throughput, that's getting quite a lot of requests, maybe it's a REST API or something like that, that this Lambda is backing, uh, then you start to care about your latency. So you can see here where this is useful. A whole bunch of other metrics as well, invocation count, so we can take a look at that. Uh, it's only one again. Whether or not you're being throttled, the number of errors, the number of concurrent executions, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. And obviously I don't have a lot of data here that does this justice, but you get the idea of what this is for. 
Um, so in terms of events now, so events are cut into two separate sections, rules, which are, um, I like to think of them as glorified cron jobs. You can look on create rule and create a kind of regularly occurring event that takes place. Uh, and you can kind of hook that up into a Lambda function if you want. So say for instance, you want to do something every minute and click schedule. Uh, so we change this to one, then you can add a target to say a Lambda function. I don't think I have any, oh, I do. So you can um, invoke this Lambda function every minute, and then you can provide an alias if you want for this Lambda function or a custom input that's passed into the Lambda function's arguments. So this is a little bit about rules. Event buses are, um, you know, they're an event bus. Go and Google event bus. Um, they're, they're similar to the SNS offering. It allows you to kind of um, feed events into an application and spit them out to certain targets. So it's really event delegation. Um, service lens is not something I use too much. Um, the canonical name is AWS X-Ray. And what this thing allows you to do is take a more granular look at what the invocations of a certain system are spending their time on. So say for instance, if you have a Lambda function that writes to Dynamo, then publishes to an SNS topic or something like that, uh, what Service Lens allows you to do is kind of see how much of the total invocation duration for this Lambda function is being spent on the DynamoDB call and how much of that is being spent on the SNS. Uh, so it gives you more insight into what is actually happening in terms of the time distribution of your invocations on a particular application. Now, Container Insights, you can see here, it's slightly new. So this is more suited for uh, those of you that are using ECS, Elastic Container Service, or Elastic Kubernetes Service. So basically, if you're using Docker containers, you probably want to care about this. Uh, so this gives you some information about maintaining your cluster, what's going on with your cluster in terms of its Docker containers uh, or its ECS tasks. So this is uh, not something that I'm too familiar with. Again, you can see this is fairly new, but if you're using ECS or EKS, I'd highly suggest you take a look. Uh, synthetics is another fairly new thing. And synthetics, um, we can kind of create canaries out of synthetics and what canaries allow you to do. It's basically monitor the health of your application through some periodic pings. So you can kind of attach a canary to a certain API and keep on invoking that API uh, every minute or on a frequent cadence that you specify. And what this will allow you to do is ensure that this API is always up and running. So this is just a way to uh, monitor the health of your service and also give you early, early warning systems or early warning notifications as you can see in this bottom box here to tell you whether or not a system is working correctly. So a fairly new feature as well, very good for web applications where you wanna kind of ensure that certain APIs are always up and running. Again, it's a, it's a fairly new thing, so I'm not too familiar with it, but I'd suggest you take a look if you're in the world of maintaining uh, applications up for a prolonged period of time. Now for contributor insights, uh, again, a fairly new feature, uh, allows you to do time series analysis on your data, allows you to do grouping of data. Again, I haven't really wor worked with this one too much, but uh, I suspect I probably will be, it seems pretty useful. Um, other than that, I would say the most popular ones, the things that you kind of really need to know from the get-go are alarms, logs, metrics, and I would say actually dashboards as well are super useful. So I hope you found this video useful and you learned a little bit about CloudWatch. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about CloudWatch. If you used it before, if you have some problems with it, I wanna know about your struggles and your positives. Uh, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.